fault on the part of the accused. No one is to blame for the fact that the investigation is not complete. In complicated matters like these with so many charges, the investigation normally takes a very long time. It takes longer than usual to get all the loose ties together. Just like the defence will require sufficient time to prepare for trial, the state also requires sufficient time to get ready and prepare for trial. Financial loss the accused must suffer owing to her detention. That is one of the factors to be considered. The detention of a person who was employed or self-employed before arrest will almost always lead to financial loss. But in this particular case, it's important to remember that the applicant allegedly deserted her family and her business to leave with accused number five. The applicant did not present any evidence to the court of the contrary, except for stating under oath in her affidavit that she was kidnapped by him. There is strong evidence by the state which is not supporting her allegation that accused number five kidnapped her. We also look at um, any impediment to the preparation of the accused defence or delay in obtaining legal representation which may be brought about by the detention of the accused and the state of health of the accused or the applicant. The applicant has obtained the services of an advocate, Advocate Lamini and Advocate Mutlaung, to assist her during the bail application and it appears that there was nothing preventing them from properly consulting with the applicant in order to proceed with this bail application. She also appears to be in good health. No allegation of ill health was ever brought to my attention. The court can also take any other factor into account which is in the opinion of the court relevant. I take into account that the applicant is detained in a correctional facility where she's taken well care of. Whenever she appeared before me, she appeared to be well groomed and in a good state of health. I'm confident that all her reasonable needs are met during her period of detention, awaiting trial. I never received a complaint from her regarding the circumstances under which she is being detained. I did, however, receive a complaint regarding her transportation to the court from the facility, but this aspect was addressed and I accept it was suitably resolved because I did not receive any further complaints. As far as her children are concerned, they are with a biological father. It's always sad that children should be separated from their mother, but this is also a choice that was apparently exercised by the applicant when she left the country with accused number five. When she left, she knew that she most probably will not return. Whenever she left under circumstances that she was kidnapped, whether that happened, that will come out during the trial. At this stage, all the evidence available points in the direction that she left voluntarily. She claimed in her affidavit that she was unaware of the presence of her passport and the other passport in the cubby hole of the vehicle, but a witness filed a statement to the effect that the applicant deceived her in handing the passport to the applicant. The fact that they did not leave with one of the applicant's vehicles, but in a rented vehicle, which they used to leave in the country, is also an indication that they intended to leave the country so that they would not be traced, to wipe out any trace of them. In conclusion, I find that the applicant is a definite flight risk and that no bail condition will assist under the circumstances to limit this risk. After weighing up the personal circumstances and the interest of the applicant and her constitutional right to freedom against the interest of justice, I find that she did not satisfy the court that it's in the interest of justice for her to be released on bail. It is, however, in the interest of justice that matters be tried and that a verdict be obtained in a court of law, and this can only happen if a person stands trial. Therefore, her application to be released on bail is refused. As it is, I 
Thank you. Ms. Magurumane, your matter is postponed to 11 October. It is for further investigation and you will remain in custody until then. Thank you. Court's adjourned.